In this segment, we're going to look at setting up your development environment for JavaFX, and this is probably not new to you. There's um, only a couple of things that you could do wrong if you've been working in Java at all. If you have been using Java 7 or earlier JDK and Eclipse before Luna, Kepler, and the other earlier ones, it's not worth it for you to try to add JavaFX to your development environment because this has been done for you in the more recent versions. So go and get the Java Developers Kit. I'm going to show you how to do that and install it and go and get the latest Eclipse and the third thing that we'll show you in this segment is how to go and get the Eclipse plugin for doing FX. And eventually we will add one more piece of software called Scene Builder for Java FX. But let's let's just get this far first. Do the the basic setup for Java and add the Eclipse plugin. I, I mean the yes, the Eclipse plugin F for FX and we'll be ready to start learning um, how to do layouts in um, FX. Okay, here we go. What we're going to do now is to install the Java Developers Kit, the most recent edition, and I find this by just searching Oracle JDK and then you'll find the Java downloads. And we want the um, standard edition downloads for what we're going to work with and this is the Oracle download page. There is no charge for doing this. Anyone can have the Java Developers Kit. And you can do this on a Windows machine or a Linux machine, a Mac, a Spark, if not too many people have Spark stations anymore. Um, I'm running Windows 7 32-bit on this machine. So I'm going to look for the Windows x86 version. If you have a 64-bit Windows machine, you should take the 64-bit one. So x86 is the 32-bit one. That seems strange. Um, the numbering seems strange, but there's a long history reason for that. I'm not going to explain it. So let's go and get this Java Developers Kit and I'm just going to save this executable in my downloads and it will take probably three or four minutes um, and I'll come back when that's done. So once you have your um, executable downloaded for the recent, most recent JDK, it's an executable on your machine and you can just run it and allow everything um, that is the default to happen during this installation. And that will take a little while. I'll be back when this one is done. So allow all of these to default and notice where this one is going, where your um, runtime environment is going to get installed. Even though we're installing the JDK, the Java Developers Kit, we're also going to install a Java runtime environment that comes with it. And just keep saying next and allow everything to go where um, they want to put it. So when that's done, we're going to go into our computer and make sure that it's there. So look under Program Files and in Java and make sure that you have the JDK and the JRE that we just installed. I have some old ones in here and I, I'm going to go and uninstall those using the control panel. I, I like to have only one 
when something goes wrong and you have to go digging for what's wrong, um, you don't want it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm going to have one JDK and one JRE, and it's going to be the most recent one. After we have the JDK installed, let's go over to Eclipse.org and get the most recent version of Eclipse. Okay, so we can go and look in Downloads, and the most recent one right now is called Luna, the L version, and you should um, get the one that is the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. We don't need the Enterprise Edition. There's some other interesting ones. You can have more than one copy of Eclipse on your machine at one time. Don't get them mixed up and don't use the same workspace for different installations of Eclipse. So I'm going to go and get the 32-bit for Windows version of Eclipse and we will download that from what's, what's close to me, Oregon State. Pick a mirror close to you. Oregon State is far, far away from me. I, I'm going to go to the Georgia Tech one, which is not that far. And I'm just going to save that file in my downloads. And that will take a few minutes as well. Once that has downloaded, let's go and um, It's a zip file. So installing Eclipse is not really an installation, it's an unzipping. So we are going to unzip this and um, some of you will want to have more than one version of Eclipse on your machine at one time. So I have a few going back and I, I, I really should get rid of some of these. But I'm going to unzip this one into onto my C drive. And when I do, I'm going to specifically put in a folder that makes sense for this version of Eclipse. So I'm, I'm installing Eclipse Luna. and it's 32-bit. Anything else you want to put on that folder name that, that might help you might be useful. Um, this is SR1. I'm going to put that there too, just in case that, that happens to be useful at some point in, this, in the future. So let's extract all of that into the C drive, and that will also take a couple of minutes. So when that unzip finishes, you're going to have um, on your C drive, whatever folder you decided to call this, an Eclipse folder. And here's the EXE, the executable for Eclipse. And I'm going to make a shortcut of that. Create shortcut. And I'm going to drop this on my desktop so that I can find it. There. You might also want to pin the application to your taskbar. And when you um, run Eclipse the first time, you may get this um, security message, and Microsoft likes to ask you things like that. Let's run it anyway. So it will ask you, um, where would you like your workspace to be? And I don't want to use this default one. I don't want to get my workspaces mixed up. So I'm going to have a workspace called um, Eclipse Luna Workspace. I don't put any spaces or special characters in, in these paths. That's just kind of asking for trouble. So Eclipse Luna Workspace so I can tell it from the other ones. Some people like to put dates on these folders. 
So the first time Eclipse launches it will look like this and you can start digging around in these tutorials and things if you want to or you can just close that and we'll take us to the um, the the standard layout for it's actually the Java perspective for editing Java code. At this point I would like us to make a, the smallest possible Java project and see if everything seems to be working the way it is, the, the way that we want it. So um, I'm going to make a project called Hello World if I can spell. Notice that we're using the Java 1.8 the standard edition 1.8 and we're going to finish that one right click on the source folder say new class click on this public static void main it will save us a little bit of typing in this very simple test to see if we have everything installed the way we want it to here's a very simple java program sysO control space will type out system out print line for you oh it didn't sysO control space oh this is different This is different from the old one. Interesting. We'll get used to it. So here's the play button that will compile and run your Java program. You can click on Always Save Resources. And it's outputting Hello World onto the console. So we have the JDK installed and we have the Eclipse Luna installed. Both of these are the most recent versions and we can see that we're using the um, 1.8 version of the, of the Java runtime environment. Okay, so we're at a very specific point where we can make Java programs. So once you have um, the most recent JDK installed and the most recent version of Eclipse, if you want to do Java FX programming, we're going to add something into Eclipse look under the help menu and go to the Eclipse Marketplace. So the Eclipse Marketplace are, are things that you can add into your Eclipse. So we want to add in a tool that will help us use FX, Java FX, and it has a, a strange name, EFX in parentheses Eclipse. Let's click on the little magnifying glass to search for that and here's the plugin. The current version of it is 0.9.0. And we will um, go ahead and install that one. If you, if you find a whole bunch of stuff in the marketplace that looks appealing to you, don't go crazy on these. Some of them tend to um, not play well with other ones. I, I try to keep as few things that can go wrong as possible. And we will go ahead and install the um, the plugin, even though it says IDE Kepler and we're on Luna. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that, and and let's do the install. I think we're a little bit ahead of the um, FX plugin tool, but that probably won't hurt us. So I'm going to accept the license and go ahead and finish this install. Okay, so when that software installation is done, the plugin for FX, you will um, be asked to restart Eclipse. So it will go away for a minute and then it will come back. And we can um, put this away. And now let's um, see if that... Um, these are not too useful right now. Let's see if that plugin worked correctly. So when we go File, New. Let's look under Other. We should have something now called Java FX. And we're going to make a Java FX project. So this is kind of the hello world of Java FX to see if this is going to 
get us into the place where we can we can start learning Java FX. So I'm going to say FX Hello World and just say um, finish and see what happens. Okay, so we have a new funny little symbol out here. It, it, it's different from a Java project and in the source folder we already have something to start with so we have a, um, a class called main and it has some JavaFX stuff in it. So this application class, for example, is part of um, the JavaFX package. And we should have um, something that runs and creates a 400 by 400 pixel application. So let's run this project. And here it is. Hello world. It is a Java FX application and you get the you get this kind of for free. Yeah, the the window and the maximize minimize and it's 400 by 400 pixels. Okay, good. This is an important place for us to get to. Our, our machines are set up for programming using Java FX user interface development. And we'll go from here to learn um, how to now start building stuff, building user interfaces in Java FX.